Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and we're here for another Sunday sew along. Um, so we finished up the M5894 sew along last week which usually I like to do a tutorial in between sew alongs and then next week <clears throat> we will start uh, Butterick uh, 628? No 6385 maybe? I'll pop a picture of it. <laughs> it's a coat. <laughs> We'll start that one next week. So I always like to do a tutorial in between just to kind of give myself a break a little bit and just to mix things up a little. Um, so this week, instead of a sewing tutorial, I thought I would do kind of a DIY. I just get a ton of questions on how I made my cutting table. And by me, I mean my husband <laughs> made my cutting table and also my pressing station. So I thought instead of a sewing tutorial, today I would talk about um, how we did both of those things. Um, that way, if any of you are wanting to do some reorganizing as we end, you know, in the year and then, um, you know, going into the new year, um, maybe the, one of these could be on your list of uh, things because they were both very easily easy. My husband did the cutting table. My son and I actually did the pressing station. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about my iron as well because I get a ton of questions about that too. Okay, so let's start with the cutting table. I will. Um, I'll just talk and then I'll do some video over my face of me showing you what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, so my cutting table is actually uh, two units that are um, pretty much identical, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but they are separate so that I can easily move them around the space. Now, both of these units are um, on casters, and I did that for a couple of reasons. Number one, just so they could be moved around easily, obviously, because they're on wheels. And then also number two, it raised it up just enough that um, it hits at my natural waist. Now, if you're taller, um, you may have you may want to do something a little bit higher. I don't know, but this is what has worked for me. So, um, and it, it comes above my waist a little bit. I wouldn't say it's not at my waist. So, if you are tall, it may be okay, um, or average height. <laughs> Anything above five two. Anyway, when I bought my Calyx units, and that is the bottom part of these um, cutting tables, there was actually an option to buy them with casters. So I purchased that option. Now I can't find that on IKEA's website now, so I don't know if that's not an option anymore. Um, but you can buy casters at any um, hardware store, and you'll just need eight. You'll need four for each corner of um, either cabinet. I think. I think that's right. Or maybe I have six on, uh oh, now I'm going to have to look. I have six on there. You'll need 12 because um, I have six on each unit. There's two in the center as well. Um, but yeah, you can buy those at the hardware store and they just get um, screwed into the bottom of the unit. The units are hollow though, just so you know. Is that right? No, the tabletops is, never mind. The Calyx units are not hollow. You're good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We'll get to the tabletops in a second. Um, so the Calyx units you can buy with um, different inserts for um, the little cubbies. And so mine are a four by two, four little cubes by two cubes. Um, and I have four drawer. So a drawer insert is actually two drawers and it goes into one cube. So I have two of those and then I have four um, door options. And that is on one of the units. The other unit I have just used um, the little basket inserts. And again, I've linked all of this down below if you're interested. And looking at it on Ikea, ordering it, or I don't have any kind of affiliate. This is just what I've used. Um, so then you'll see I also have um, eight baskets on the back that um, side of the second calyx unit so it's just eight baskets but on the front one I have four drawers and then four cabinets and then I've got one that's open and then a basket um, so you can kind of basically do whatever you want and I know that there's a few other accessories that you can buy for those little units on their website um, if you wanted you know something a little different I think there's even a wine rack one like a it's like a <clears throat> grid almost where you can put wine bottles if you wanted I don't know um, actually that might actually work kind of well for the um, because I have all of my pattern paper in one of the things, which is just medical exam paper from Amazon. Um, you can find that on my Amazon store. Anyway, <laughs> that is the bottom part of these units. And again, you just put them together per um, Ikea's instructions. These are pretty easy. And also with the inserts, whether it be the drawer or the cabinet inserts, obviously the baskets, they're just a basket that you, you buy. I think they're $4 or $3. Um, and then they just, you know, unfold and then you just stick them in the um, opening. They just completely come out. So that's pretty easy. And then again, they're attached to casters. Now for the top, so for the, the tabletop, I've gone with the Linman. I'm not probably pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> and I've linked the size that I used. I think it was the 78 by whatever. 
but I've linked the actual tabletops that we um, used and we bought two of those obviously because each unit has one attached to it and it's just attached centered over the top of the calyx unit. Um, my husband used brackets and um, hollow door um, screws because these are hollow. Um, we ran into an issue with that and actually he did accidentally in one spot go all the way through um, to the top part of the uh, tabletop and oh my gosh he's such a perfectionist that about did amend that he had accidentally done that but um, yeah so use shorter screws but we have just affixed those with the brackets um, just to make sure that they are on there nice and secure um, and I'm trying to think if he used adhesive or not he may have used an adhesive too to glue it to the top and then put in the brackets I can't remember to be honest anyway the brackets hold it in place um, and keep everything together and also make it super easy to move you can just move the tabletops to move each unit so those pushed together make my cutting table and then my cutting mat is from quiltersrule.com and they have cutting mats um, self-healing cutting mats in a huge range of sizes they are kind of pricey but I've had mine for eight years now and it's still in great condition and I you know I would definitely I would buy it again when this one does finally need to be replaced and it's probably getting you know it's just you know self-healing mats they they heal for a while you know they'll keep healing keep healing but um, the area that I use the most I've noticed that the grid is starting to wear off just a little bit I mean I can probably get another few years out of it um, but I will definitely purchase another one from that quiltersrule.com because it's just been fantastic um, mine is a 36 by 68 grid so it's a one inch um, grid 36 one way and 68 the other way obviously it's larger than that because there's a border that goes around it um, so it comes very close to being 36 a little bit bigger than 36 by 72 when all is said and done um, but yes the grid itself is 36 by 68 inches um, and it works pretty great for most projects um, I could go a little bit larger probably with these because um, I do have a border of tabletop that does go around the mat um, so yeah you could go with a larger mat if you wanted to uh, but I had purchased the mat before I made the cutting table so the mat used to sit on top of our ping pong table <laughs> And now, um, obviously, it's got its own place. So there you have it. That is my cutting table. And again, it has been phenomenal. I think I've had the cutting table now for two years. Um, I think it was around... No, I don't think it was Christmas. My sister and her family were here when we did all of that. So it, may, it must have been like March. I'm probably coming on two years of having um, that cutting table. And it just has... It's been a game changer. I love it so much. So yeah, if that's something, and for honestly, for what you're getting, I think we spent about $500 total in all of the Ikea pieces, um, as well, you know, as the accessories, and then, you know, any of the bits and bobs, you know, the brackets and all that kind of stuff. I think we have about $500 in that project. Next up is my pressing station. So this is a really easy one. My son and I did this one. It is a kitchen island cart that we purchased from Ikea. It's a completely wood cart. Um, it comes with a couple of shelves underneath and then also has two little drawers, um, which is all part of the kitchen cart. That's just what <clears throat> comes. And then it's on, it's got little wheels on one end, so it makes it easy to move if you need to, um, which sometimes that is handy, you know, moving things around. It's nice to have that on wheels. So when we were putting this together and building it per Ikea instructions, we just took the um, top of the kitchen cart, which is wood, and um, I wrapped it with uh, a layer of batting, like quilting batting, um, and I went with a, uh, did I do a cotton, I think I did a cotton batting. I kept it, you know, as natural as possible, but went with a cotton batting that I wrapped, and I may have done two layers, to be honest, around the whole thing and secured it with a staple gun on the back um, that I just got at a hardware store. Mine's not you know, it doesn't plug in. It's a manual just uh, stapler. And then I wrapped um, a layer of cotton duck fabric over that and stapled that into place. And then I just left, because um, there's pre-drilled holes on the bottom that allow you to attach it to the top of the cart because, you know, for what Ikea has made. So I just made sure that those um, areas were left uncovered <laughs> when you're wrapping the top just so it can be easily um, put on top of the cart. So yeah, that's all I did. I just wrapped it in a couple layers of cotton batting, quilters batting, and then the cotton cotton duck. And honestly, it needs to probably be replaced, the cotton duck, which when you've stapled it in, it's just a matter of getting some needle nose pliers out, unstapling, you know, pulling the staples out for that and just recovering it with another layer of cotton duck, um, you know, 
and then you've got a freshly done uh, tabletop. I did go with a um, natural color because I didn't want there to be any chance of a dye or anything uh, leaking onto a project when I was steaming it or ironing it or any of that kind of stuff. So I did go with a natural no dyed fabric and that's why I chose the color that I did for the top. Um, yeah, so I love it because it's got the, you know, the shelves on there for all of my pressing tools. It's got the two drawers where I keep like my ham and my seam roll. Um, I keep my fray check in one of those and a pressing cloth in one of those drawers. And then all of my distilled water goes on the very bottom because I do have a gravity felt fed iron. So my iron is from Wawak and I'll put a link to it down below, the newest model. I've had my iron for, I don't know, like five years or five or six years now. So there's a newer model, but it's basically the same thing. And I've had some people um, ask some questions because there are, when you look at irons on Wawak, there's a whole bunch of options for different parts as well. Um, and they're like, you know, do I need the parts? You know, how does that work? What's wonderful about this iron is that it do, they do sell parts if you have an issue with any part breaking on your iron. So the iron comes with, um, everything you need, you know, everything that you're seeing on my pressing station, it comes with that silicone um, rest there because you it rests on its um, like down. It doesn't rest on its butt like a home iron would. It rests on that silicone pad when you're not using it. Um, and then it comes with a Teflon, I think it's, or just a shoe, an iron shoe that goes over it. I don't know that it's Teflon, but it um, keeps the iron up a little bit. So I have never had any issues with anything scorching with this iron. And I keep it on like a medium heat, um, like a three or a four on the back for everything. And that's what I iron and press on for everything. And it works great. The steam on this is amazing. You hit the little button and it shoots the steam out. Fantastic. The only thing that I've ever had to um, replace is the resin beads that are up in the tank. And I'll show you those. So those are blue when you dump them into the tank and they will turn an amber color as they start to age. So if you're noticing that there's more amber than blue in that tank, that's the time that you just dump out those old resin beads and you dump in a new package of resin beads that you can buy from Wawak. And that actually keeps all of the um, minerals and stuff out of the water. Now I use distilled water, so I hardly ever have to change these resin beads. It takes forever for them to, to ever need to be changed. But if you're using tap water or something, I'm sure you would need to change them much more regularly. Um, but yeah, I just prefer to use distilled water. We live in Indiana and we have extremely hard water. Even though we have a water softener and the reverse osmosis machine and all of that jazz, um, we just have really hard water and it wears um, appliances down really quickly. Um, you know water heaters, uh, refrigerators, um, anything that uses water, washing machines, they um, have a much shorter life here in Indiana because of the hard water. So um, I just go ahead and use distilled water in my iron and it's worked great. Now you can also, there's a silicone tube that connects the um, tank to the uh, iron and I have had to, um, I had that rip right next to the iron because I dropped my iron off of the um, tabletop and actually it dented the shoe and um, I was able just to take the shoe off of the iron and just replace that. So I have had to buy a new one of those, which you can from Wawak. They're very, very reasonably priced. Um, and you can also buy like more of that um, silicone tubing, which I have not had to replace, although it did rip when that happened. So all I did was I cut above the rip and then just put it back on myself. Um, so yeah, you can fix the iron yourself as well. <laughs> Um, anyway, that's the only issue I've ever had, and that's only because I dropped it. <laughs> I let it fall off the edge. I set it down on the silicone pad, and the silicone pad had been shifted a little bit, and so when I set it down, it was not actually on the table. It was only halfway on the table, and that's when it fell, and water went everywhere, and yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, if you're just careful, you don't have to change any of those parts, but that's why they do sell those parts if, um, you know, something happens to your iron, you can fix it. So you don't, it's not a throwaway product, which is fantastic. And I really love that about it. So anyway, I love that iron. I highly recommend it. Um, I think it's on sale right now for $98. It's normally like 109, I think. Um, but for a hundred bucks, it is way better than any home iron that I've ever used. And I've used some expensive home irons that are even, have been like 150 bucks. Uh, this one, it doesn't leak. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And the steam that comes out of this thing is just crazy. So I, um, I mean, I, if I'm ever away um, sewing, like on a retreat or that kind of thing, and I'm having to use a home iron again, it's almost painful. <laughs> because this is just that wonderful. Um, I do have it hanging from a hook from the ceiling. Um, that hook is just a little um, screwed hook that we put into a stud in the ceiling. And um, yeah, it holds an entire gallon of, or almost an entire gallon of water um, with the resin beads. I never fill it all the way to the top. 
um, but almost the whole gallon of distilled water will fit into that tank and it hangs fine from the ceiling and I've never had any issues. Again, we've, we screwed that into a stud there from the ceiling. So there you have it. Um, it it's a great setup. I really love it. I get a ton of questions on it. Again, I've linked everything down below in the description box if you're interested in um, having a look-see. I don't, none of these are affiliate links, so um, I don't get any kickback or anything from them. It's just what I've used and what has worked really well for me. Okay, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful um, Sunday, and I will see you all again on Tuesday, or if you're following along on Vlogmas, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, guys, see you then. Bye.